गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू जी के टूडे आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेरी वेल एंड टूडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यूज फॉर फोर्टींथ ऑफ फेब्रुवरी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर लेट स्टार्ट विद आवर सेशन रिसेंटली हु रिलीज द रिपोर्ट टाइटल्ड एज एल एन जी एज अ ट्रांसपोर्टेशन फ्यूल इन मीडियम एंड हैवी कमर्शियल व्हीकल्स सो नीति आयोग एंड नेदरलैंड्स एम्बेसी release this particular report during india energy week 2024 the venue of which was goa state so this collaboration was initiated in the year 2020 and it focuses on energy transition basically this report addresses lng utilization in indian commercial vehicles by examining coordination challenges and drawing the insights from global practices so as we know that netherlands is a leader in green hydrogen sector and it plans to help india in achieving our climate targets so this report outlines different strategies for a 15% gas share in primary energy by the end of 2070 okay simply you have to remember that lng as a transportation fuel in medium and heavy commercial vehicle is a joint report of niti aayog and netherlands embassy fine next is सरकार गांव के द्वार इनिशिएटिव रिसेंटली सीन इन द न्यूज इज लॉन्च बाय विच इंडियन स्टेट हियर आंसर इज हिमाचल प्रदेश हु इज द करेंट चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ हिमाचल प्रदेश मिस्टर सुखविंदर सिंह सुक्खू ही लेड द सरकार गांव के द्वार इनिशिएटिव एंड ही इंगेज विद द लोकल्स वेयर ही एड्रेस्ड द कंसर्न एंड मेड सम ट्रांसफॉर्मेटिव अनाउंसमेंट लाइक स्टैब्लिशमेंट ऑफ अ ब्लॉक डेवलपमेंट ऑफिसर ऑफिस इन Surani then there is a jal shakti department division in jwalamukhi and a sub division in majheen okay basic aim is to propel the region's development fine so sarkar gaon ke dwar initiative belongs to himachal pradesh state now apart from it our president draupadi murmu inaugurated the four day vividhata ka amrit mahotsav cultural festival at amrit udyan rashtrapati bhavan in new delhi so it is organized by ministry of development of the north eastern region in collaboration with ministry of culture and this event aims to showcase the rich diversity of the north eastern india and with over 320 participants it highlights the traditional art craft and agricultural product promoting the cultural exchange and catalyzing progress in the region's handicraft handloom and agriculture sector right you can be asked that where was the cultural festival vividhta ka amrit mahotsav organized so your answer would be new delhi next is recently which country has inaugurated its newest antarctic research station the kinling facility here answer is china and with this china opened its fifth antarctic research station which is the kinling facility on inexpressible island in the ross sea okay here they demonstrated a commitment to scientific exploration in this region and this station will focus on diverse research including the biological oceanography glaciology and marine ecology and this inauguration underscores china's active role in advancing the polar research and in understanding the complexities of antarctica's ecosystem right so china country has recently inaugurated its latest antarctic research station which is the fifth one the name of which is the kinling facility now these days banar ghatta national park is in news and uh, here its location is very very important banar ghatta national park lies in the state of karnataka actually why this national park came into news because protest have erupted over a proposal by the national highways authority of india to construct a six lane elevated highway through bangalore's banar ghatta national park and this project is a part of the satellite township ring road which aims to ease traffic but it has sparked the concerns among environmentalist for its potential impact on the ecologically sensitive park right because it is home to endangered species uh, that's why it is a matter of concern and the plan includes cutting 1288 trees within the park and the environmentalist want some alternative routes where they emphasize the need 
for a balanced approach to infrastructure development and environmental conservation right so since dandrakhatta national park came into news its location can be asked in your examination it lies in the state of karnataka next is which two countries are involved in the kaladan multi model transit transport project recently seen in the news here answer is india and myanmar that is c option so arakan army's capture of paletwa in the myanmar's chin state poses some challenges to the kaladan multi model transit transport project between india and myanmar and this project is currently facing some delays uh, basic aim is to connect kolkata with the sitwe seaport that lies in the rakhine state and the arakan army uh, which are allied with china supported group adds new political complexities now right so which two countries are involved in kaladan multi model transit transport project answer is india and myanmar next is what is the name of the new scheme approved by the union cabinet to improve the fishery sector here answer is pradhan mantri मत्स्य किसान समृद्धि सह योजना एंड यूनियन कैबिनेट हैज रिसेंटली अप्रूव्ड दिस योजना व्हिच इज अ सब स्कीम अंडर द प्रधानमंत्री मत्स्य संपदा योजना सो विद अ बजट ऑफ सिक्स थाउजेंड करोर रुपीज दिस फोर इयर इनिशिएटिव एम्स टू फॉर्मलाइज द फिशरी सेक्टर विच वुड प्रोवाइड इंस्टीट्यूशनल क्रेडिट टू द फिशर्स एक्वाकल्चर फार्मर्स एंड वेंडर्स एंड सम ऑफ द की बेनिफिट्स आर फॉर एग्जाम्पल a national fisheries digital platform and uh, it would provide support for micro enterprises and cooperatives also job creation particularly for women is another important factor under this scheme and uh, a shift from conventional subsidies to performance based incentive can be seen okay so pradhan mantri matsya kisan samriddhi sah yojana is a new scheme that has been approved by the union cabinet to improve our fisheries sector now these days save wetlands campaign is also in, is in news which ministry is associated with this campaign answer is ministry of environment forest and climate change actually this is a campaign which has been initiated by ministry of environment forest and climate change on world wetlands day 2023 and uh, basic aim of this campaign is wetland conservation where we have emphasized awareness and uh, to expand the wetland mitra coverage and to foster citizen partnerships as well so it is aligned with mission life okay and mission sahbhagita philosophy as well and it operated nationwide leveraging the ramsar sites as model anchors and the participants included state wetland authorities district administration municipal corporation gram panchayat educational institute knowledge partners etc so that they can yield positive outcomes in together okay you can be asked that safe wetland campaign that was recently seen in the news is launched by which ministry your answer would be ministry of environment forest and climate change next is mahamudia wetland recently seen in the news is located in which particular country so world wildlife fund is now requesting the romanian government to designate this particular wetland as a national interest ecological restoration area for conservation and mahamudia is located in the danube delta and it is crucial for its unique ecosystem which act as a natural buffer zone with extensive marshes and filtering the pollutants from the danube river so danube delta biosphere reserve which hosts more than 5500 flora and fauna species is the third most biodiverse area globally and a UNESCO World Heritage Site earning it the title of the pearl of Romanian tourism right so mahamudia wetland lies in the country romania why it came into news because the world wildlife fund is requesting the romania country to designate this wetland as a national interest ecological restoration area for its conservation okay similarly there is a barrage that came into news it is kalinga rayan ani cut barrage basically it is a 13th century barrage on the bhavani river in erode district of tamil nadu and it is among the world's oldest water diversion project it is acknowledged as a world heritage irrigation structure in the year 2021 and uh, 
it was commissioned by kalinga rayan who was the ruler of pundurai nadu simply you have to remember that kalinga rayan anikat barrage that came into news is located in which indian state answer is tamil nadu next is suna beda wildlife sanctuary recently seen in the news is located in which indian state so recent mild securities clash occurred in suna beda wildlife sanctuary which is located in odisha's nuapada district it was established in the year 1983 and this sanctuary spans nearly 600 square kilometer it is adjacent to chatisgarh's sita nadi and udanti structures it features diverse habitat like plateau canyons and waterfalls and it serves as a jonk rivers catchment area as well dry deciduous tropical forest house various flora such as bija teak and fauna include balsingha tigers leopards and it serve as a migration link for rare wild buffaloes between odisha and chatisgarh okay simply you have to remember the location of sunabeda wildlife sanctuary it lies in the state of odisha next is road to paris 2024 championing clean sports and uniting for anti doping conference is recently hosted by which particular organization so national anti doping agency that is nada held the road to paris 2024 conference to educate indian athletes on the dangers of prohibited substances so anurag singh thakur inaugurated the center of excellence for nutritional supplements testing at the national forensic science university that lies in gandhinagar in the state of gujarat okay so this university is recognized for its national significance and it is a hub of innovation in forensic and cyber sciences this event in new delhi facilitates crucial discussions and strategies for anti doping initiatives that leads up to the 2024 paris olympics fine so road to paris 2024 conference is recently hosted by nada that is national anti doping agency also don't forget that the indian institute of tropical metrology is pioneering india's earth system model which is an open source software merging atmosphere ocean land ice and biosphere interactions so it utilizes numeral weather prediction and data assimilation for precise climate change forecast and it collaborates with the center for climate change research and the project aims to enhance the climate forecast and to support long term studies and predict some type of impacts uh it is funded with 192 crore rupees under the monsoon convection clouds and climate change scheme and this model is anticipated to conclude by the end of 2025 okay simply you can be asked that recently which institute has developed a first for india earth system model to improve the climate forecast and predict climate impact your answer would be indian institute of tropical metrology okay next is What is the name of the satellite recently launched by NASA to survey oceans and the atmosphere? Here answer is space that is option number C. NASA and SpaceX rescheduled the space mission launch due to weather delays, okay? And this mission has explored ocean atmosphere connections amid the climate change. Basic aim is to understand the impact of microscopic life in water and air. So this space will monitor carbon dioxide exchange, atmospheric variables, and the ocean health through phytoplankton study. And the mission's aerosol products will help the health advisories for phenomena like wildfires and to monitor harmful algae blooms as well. Scientists express excitement for groundbreaking insights where they have emphasized space significance in advancing the Earth system understanding. Okay, what is the full form of space? It is plankton aerosol cloud and ocean ecosystem okay once again what is the full form of space plankton aerosol cloud and ocean ecosystem so what is the name of the satellite recently launched by nasa to survey the oceans and atmosphere answer is space similarly recently astronomers at china detected a radio pulsar in ctb 87 supernova remnant using the world's largest single dish radio telescope that is fast okay fast is located in guzhou and it has a receiving area equivalent to 30 football fields and it aims to maintain its world class status for 
ट्वेंटी टू थर्टी ईयर्स इट्स गोल आर टू डिटेक्ट न्यूट्रल हाइड्रोजन एट द यूनिवर्स एच एंड टू रिकन्स्ट्रक्ट अर्ली यूनिवर्स इमेजेस बाय डिस्कवरिंग पल्सर्स एंड पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन ग्रेविटेशनल वेव डिटेक्शन एंड कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग टू द सर्च फॉर एक्स्ट्रा टेरिस्ट्रियल इंटेलिजेंस राइट सो यू वैन बी आज दट फास्ट टेलीस्कोप दैट वॉज रिसेंटली सीन इन द न्यूज इज डेवलप्ड बाय विच कंट्री यूर आंसर विड बी चाइना नेक्स्ट इज वॉट इज द थीम ऑफ न्यू डेल्ही वर्ल्ड बुक फेयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर हेयर multilingual india a living tradition the new delhi book fair is hosted by the national book trust and itpo from 10th of february to 18th of february and the theme was multilingual india important thing is saudi arabia country is the guest of honor highlighting its literary heritage with 25 delegates fostering the cultural exchange and strengthening the bilateral ties between india and saudi arabia at pragati maidan in new delhi okay so two things are important what is the theme of new delhi world book fair answer is multilingual india a living tradition also you can be asked that which country was the guest of honor at this book fair answer is saudi arabia next is recently which northeastern state becomes the first to reinstate old pension scheme for the employees here answer is sikkim option number c who is the current chief minister of sikkim prem singh tamang and he has declared the reinstatement of the old pension scheme for the state government employees who are hired after 1st of april 2006 okay so as per the sikkim services pension rules 1990 employees appointed before 31st of march 1990 will benefit from this revival and this move is a significant step towards securing the financial well-being of the state government employees especially with the imminent state assembly elections right so sikkim recently became the first northeastern state to reinstate the old pension scheme for the employees talking about the maharashtra state recently google which is a tech giant has partnered with the government of maharashtra by signing a memorandum of understanding to deploy the artificial intelligence solution okay and this collaboration spans the sectors like agriculture sustainability healthcare education and the startups so a cutting edge ai center of excellence will be established at triple iit nagpur and uh, maharashtra aims for ai driven economic development where they would focus on healthcare and agriculture so this initiative includes the training of 500 government it professionals in conservational ai skills and addressing the healthcare and agricultural challenges with ai solution right you can be asked that recently which state has signed a memorandum of understanding on artificial intelligence with google here answer would be maharashtra next is Recently which bank has approved a 200 million dollars loan for Brahmaputra river project in the state of Assam Here answer is Asian Development Bank headquarter lies in Philippines and they have sanctioned a 200 million dollars loan to bolster the flood and river bank erosion risk management along the Brahmaputra river in the state of Assam and the project emphasizes a comprehensive and integrated strategy leveraging successful past initiatives to tackle persistent challenges of flooding and erosion in this region so it prioritizes long term planning and heightened support for climate and disaster resilience so as to mitigate these issues effectively fine so asian development bank has approved a 200 million dollars loan for brahmaputra river project in the state of assam similarly the national board for wildlife has recently postponed the decision on diverting the forest land for kalasa banduri project in kali and sahyadri tiger reserves they lie in karnataka state so this project aims to address the drinking water needs in karnataka's belagavi dharwad bagalkot and gadag district by diverting the water from goa's mahadai river to the malaprabha river basin which is a tributary to krishna river it is proposed in the year 1980 and uh, the project faced disputes among karnataka goa and maharashtra so barges on kalsa and banduri streams are now planned to redirect the water to karnataka's drought prone district fine 
you can be asked that mala prabha river that was recently seen in the news is a tributary of which river answer is krishna river next is who is the new brand ambassador of the fit india movement this is an extremely important question and government of india has appointed the irs officer mr narendra kumar yadav as the brand ambassador for the fit india movement mr narendra kumar yadav is the additional director of gst and the first civil servant to be appointed as a brand ambassador for this movement okay that's why this appointment is important who is the new brand ambassador of fit india movement answer is irs officer narendra kumar yadav also the rlc has nearly disappeared due to a major soviet water diversion project in the year 1960 and the diversion of the sir darya and darya rivers for irrigation project led to the seas gradual drying up it is located between kazakhstan and uzbekistan country and this aral sea depression formed million of years ago and uh, it drained several countries harsh central asian climate and unsustainable human intervention caused its decline which leaves it on the brink of complete disappearance simply you can be asked that aral sea that was recently seen in the news it stands at the boundary between which two countries answer is kazakhstan and uzbekistan what is the present estimated demand for hydrogen in the state of uttar pradesh so estimated demand for the hydrogen in uttar pradesh is right now 9 lakh tons per year and this demand is primarily in the fertilizer and the refinery sectors so government of uttar pradesh has announced the plans to establish two centers of excellence for the green hydrogen research and the policy also focuses on increasing the hydrogen blending in consumption areas to promote its widespread adoption up aims to construct 1 million tons per annum green hydrogen production capacity generating an estimated 1 lakh 20000 jobs okay so present estimated demand for hydrogen in up is 9 lakh tons per year next is where was the center of excellence in nutritional supplements testing for sports person inaugurated i have just told you india has inaugurated its first ever center for excellence in nutritional supplements testing for sports person at the national forensic science university that lies in gandhi nagar in the state of gujarat so it was unveiled by the union minister anurag singh thakur and this lab is dedicated to screen the supplements for banned substances which would ensure the well-being of athletes and it would uphold sports integrity basic emphasis is fair play clean competition and the importance of safe supplements for athletes who are preparing for major events like the paris 2024 games okay so this initiative aims to provide indian athletes with dope free nutritional supplement so the center for excellence in nutritional supplement testing for a sports person has been inaugurated in the state of gandhinagar in gujarat next is which institute has been honored with the nelson mandela award 2024 by the who so national institute of mental health and neurosciences has been honored with the 2024 nelson mandela award by the world health organization for its exceptional commitment to promote mental health and well being so it is recognized for pioneering mental health and neuroscience advancement and it supports innovative research education and patient care which would integrate mental health into the general health care so this award coincides with nimhans 50th foundation year which reflects the past achievements and the institute's ongoing dedication to its mission right so national institute of mental health and neurosciences which is also known as nim hans has been honored with the nelson mandela award this year by which organization by the world health organization next is where was the 67th all india police duty meet held so the 67th all india police duty meet was hosted by the railway protection force in lucknow in the state of uttar pradesh from 12th to 16th of february okay who is our union minister of railways mr ashwini vaishna he was the chief guest at the opening ceremony and chief minister of up yogi adityanath will attend the closing ceremony so this event was organized by the rpf and basic aim is to promote excellence and collaboration among the police officers which will foster scientific 
detection investigation and internal security and the dedicated mobile application and website facilitate real time updates and communication which would enhance the overall participate participant experience okay so what was the venue for the 67th edition of all india police duty meet answer is lucknow also the center for development of telematics means c dot has partnered with iit kharagpur to develop the prototypes for a 10 gigabit capable symmetric xgs pon optical line terminal and optical network unit under the telecom technology department fund scheme which is approved by the department of telecommunication so this initiative aims to provide funding support for technology design development and commercialization of telecommunication product which would foster the affordable broadband and mobile services in rural areas so this collaboration seeks to create a cutting edge 10 gigabytes per second access network technology solution which would definitely contribute to the growth of affordable connectivity in india right so recently which institute has signed an agreement with c dot for developing the prototypes answer is iit kharagpur last question is who has been appointed as a non executive chairman and independent director of npci so the national payments corporation of india announced the appointment of mr ajay kumar choudhary as the non executive chairman of its board and independent director he is a central banker with a career at the reserve bank of india spanning over 3 decades talking about npci it is an organization that was founded in the year 2008 to oversee and operate india's retail payments and settlement system so this system include the platforms like imps upi and the rupee cards okay so ajay kumar choudhary has been appointed as the non executive chairman and independent director of the npci and uh, there is uh, one last question kerala is set to introduce india's first genomics based infectious disease test named as infection tm okay simply you can be asked that which state is the first state of india to introduce india's first genomics based infectious disease test answer would be kerala so these are the most important current affairs and the news from today whatever we had missed earlier is now covered so from tomorrow onwards we will continue our revision session now let's start with today's quiz here on the slide you can see five questions which have been taken from the past 2 3 days current affairs pause the video and try to solve each of these questions and at the end of the lecture do not forget to share your scores in the comment section so please be honest and do not cheat with yourself so that's it for today i hope you have liked the session these were the important news and events from today and we will meet again tomorrow with some more important current affairs till then stay tuned thank you so much for watching and please do not forget to subscribe to gk today with this minus hatsana signing off